I'm Sharon Skolnick Bagnoli, and I'm sitting here amidst a treasury of toys. It makes me want to be even younger than I am. Today, I am with Steve Ann Arbath, Dr. Arbath. Hello. Hi, Sharon. Thanks so much for having me here. You're welcome. I'm glad you like toys. Oh, I love toys. I would like to know, I know you're also called Dr. Toy, mm -hmm. and I would like to know where that came about. I know you have a PhD. Is it in toys? Uh, the PhD is in child development and education, mm -hmm. and I started as a teacher, and so when you work with children, you know that the highest form of learning happens through play, and so finding good toys, games, puzzles, activities that children can do in the classroom mm -hmm. is the way I started, and I was looking at toys that can be used in the classroom, mm -hmm. and I was writing for teachers, and uh, at that time, I was also... Uh, I created a very special place for children and parents to come to play. It was called the San Francisco International Toy Museum. Mm -hmm. And it was in the San Francisco at the Fisherman's Wharf at the Cannery. And one day I was on the floor fixing some toys that were broken, and one of my board members came in and said, you're a doctor toy, you fix broken toys. <laughs> and that nickname stuck. That's and nice. everyone started calling me Dr. Toy. Because it almost has a sound of being a healer of toys. Well, healer. the toys heal. You know, the toys are used for children in hospitals. They're used for uh, people who have been traumatized. They give teddy bears to children who have been traumatized from an accident or a fire. And also because toys are so important and play is so important, we play the rest of our lives. Uh, we're never too old to play, mm -hmm. and so the more we play, the more playful we are, and it's part of my whole philosophy is to encourage play. You know, speaking of uh, the Red Cross and teddy bears, uh, I heard once, or I learned once in a class, that um, the teddy bears, or a, hugging a stuffed animal, is actually giving comfort to your esophagus, which is the emotional heart, because they proved that by looking into a, a boy that had uh, a hole in his uh, in his chest, so you could see his esophagus. And when you sit and they said, "Johnny, you're a really sweet guy," his esophagus would be all pink and healthy. And if they said, "Johnny, you're a horrible and hateful kid," mm. it would get all white and tight. That's right. So they realized that there was emotion affecting it. The so emotions, we, the yeah. emotions affect the chemicals in the body. And through the whole sense of play, you're encouraging the flow of the happiness and healthy uh, response. Um, children who play and are active are healthier, and they're going to be happier, and certainly this is what we want in school as well as uh, at home. And really, this is something you can't take for granted. Mm -hmm. You know, parents learn, you know, along with the child doesn't come a, um, a, a manual that tells you exactly how to do things. So that's why I wrote a book about play and toys from baby to age 12. Um, that's why I wrote actually three books on toys. Um, after the toy museum, I uh, uh, focused on evaluating products uh, for teachers, products that you could have in the classroom, say an early childhood classroom, daycare, nursery school, into uh, elementary school, into high school, mm -hmm. products that kids can learn and have fun with. Mm -hmm. So I'm interested in how toys help children with their emotions, with their activity, and with their creativity. Do you think it's healthy for a four-year-old boy to um, to have a, a rabbit toy, soft and fuzzy, that he's so enamored of. And oh, totally. Yeah. A, a child, um, particularly preschool children, get really attached to their lovies. And this provides them with a friend, a comfort. When they get upset, they mm -hmm. can talk to their pet rabbit or teddy bear or dog. Um, and whether it be a puppet, which a parent might use while they read to the child, or having a soft, plush, doll or toy. Every child gets attached to their toys, and the toys are really important to them. So sometimes parents don't realize that, and they sometimes toss things away that are really precious. And I hear this from adults very often to say, my mother 
threw away mm. my favorite teddy bear. It still hurts. And it really hurts years yeah. later. And my mother, who was in her uh, late 90s, um, wanted a doll that she had when she was nine years old that her sister broke. Mm -hmm. And that was all she wanted for her birthday last year, and she's 98. Whoa. Uh, so we got her an American doll. Did you find a doll and like that? we found that? a doll that was just oh. like uh -huh. her, the doll. It was a, a, the immigrant doll, Rebecca, that looks a very authentic. She like appreciated it? From, it? Oh, she loved it. Oh. So you're never too old to like a toy. So what is a toy? Well, a toy is an object, a, a, a thing, a something that um, the, the person, child or adult, can interact with, like this Tangle toy. When you look at it, you don't know what it is, but when you touch it and you start moving it, it interacts with you. It brings out the qualities of relaxation and fun, and I brought one for you. And this product is made in South San Francisco, and the artist was the original creator, uh, Richard Zowitz of um, Tangle Toys. And he had created a large sculpture and then thought it would make a wonderful toy. And I think it's one of these great toys. I carry them around with me all the time, and when I hear a child crying, oh, and it snaps so back good. together yeah. again. And as an adult, you can take this, put it around your rearview mirror, Mm -hmm. And when you're in traffic, instead of getting stressed out, you've got something to play with. Mm -hmm. And then it became uh, with hair attached to it, and so you can feel this is very tactile. It's like those pop it. It's, it's like that. But the idea is, is it's an endless else. toy. Ooh. And so a toy can be something as simple as this. Mm -hmm. A toy can be a stacking toy like this that a child is going to learn colors and shapes and how to put things together and figure things out. So are they so, models? Is a toy a model of the universe? Well, a, a, a toy like is an world? opportunity, a, um, an object that children can interact with that allows them to learn something, to create something, like, like Legos or construction toys. Um, this is a green toys that is made actually in Marin. And really? it's a local product that I just think is fabulous. You can find them in Whole Foods and a lot of the wonderful toy stores. Green Toys started with the idea of taking um, milk containers um, mm -hmm. that are recycled. recycled and they have a special tooling process. And they have made a recycle truck, the fire truck, dishes, cups, ah. and so on. <laughs> and it becomes something that's really quite wonderful because it's easy to clean it's very it's fun and children will get into a toy they will role play that's right toy stimulates their activity whereas a ball which is one of the most basic toys will interact the child's going to roll it they're going to throw it you can put a um, mm -hmm. waste basket and they can be throwing it uh, they can throw it to each other they practice by hand coordination and so on. So a toy has many different properties. It's affection, it's creativity, it's interaction, it's uh, learning, and even taking something like Wemo, which is um, a, a company also that uh, started in San Francisco. Um, a hula hoop, frisbee, gets you physical activity. So a toy has, the toy is a very broad category to cover dolls, teddy bears, puppets, construction toys, a whole range of things. In the category of toys also are things like games and puzzles, mm -hmm. like this bedazzled puzzle that are eight inch squares and the company has a hundred different themes and you put these nine pieces down and it's challenging to put them back together again. So your mind's stimulated. Mm -hmm. So a toy to continue the definition of it, yeah. stimulates your mind, stimulates your body, develops your emotions, and gives you a chance to role play and practice for life. So that's an um, incredible opportunity for children to learn, to practice, mm -hmm. to role play, to figure things out, to problem solve, and that's why it has the educational value. So mm -hmm. the toys that I look for, mm -hmm. um, don't necessarily have big advertising budgets or whatever, so they may not be well known. But here's something that was, again, was designed by a San Francisco designer, and it's a wonderful baby product. 
The baby has all kinds of surprises in store. Totally so it's stimulating, they're, they're looking, they yeah. sounds. And they're different ethnicities of children. There's too, something to grab the teeth and ring. Has a subtle learning exactly. aspect. Exactly. Too. So just the idea the that everything. Look the same. And, and blocks are not something that um, are structured, it's unstructured. So right. the child's going to figure out what they want to do with the blocks. And well, that's, that's what makes it fun. One thing that, I've, uh, that disturbs me when I go into toy stores or toy departments of stores that so many of the construction toys are pre, pre-programmed in a way. It's like the designer of the toys or the company doesn't want to trust the children to come up with things. They, they kind of say, oh, yes, you have to build a uh, dune <coughs> buggy with these Legos. Well, let's just say that sometimes the way the company thinks it, that kids want something is structured, so they make that particular dinosaur or whatever it might be. They also offer a box of unlimited um, Lego so that you can do that, and other companies do that as well. But here in Marin, there is a place in uh, San Anselmo called Playwell, and it is a wonderful resource for children to go to where they have unlimited amounts of Legos that they can build to their heart's content. Mm -hmm. And they go out to schools and bring the Legos to the schools and other construction products. Well, Legos have become a big industry, or they've branched into electronics and all kinds of things. Um, That's a whole story of its own. I wanted to mention that I uh, once worked with uh, elders and people with Alzheimer's, um, Mm -hmm. and uh, toys and games were very important to them. Uh, Simple toys. We used to do balloon toss. That Mm -hmm. was very... Even people that are can't remember anything and, they and can are do confused, that. they can do this right. when it comes to them. And, and there's a joy and a connection mm-hmm. with the right. other people. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. That's why I feel that play is so essential. And just recently, actually this past week, the Association, American Association of Pediatrics came out with this very strong statement about how important play was to deal with obesity in children, to deal with their educational needs, and it's a statement that I'm really happy they finally have come out with an official statement. Mm-hmm. But I think uh, doctors need to encourage patients to play more. Uh, rather than taking pills, mm-hmm. medications for stress, I think if you grab a ball or a hula hoop and you get out and start using it, you can get de-stressed very easily. And then you need to do that um, mm-hmm. because everybody works too hard thinking too much and spending too much time on electronics. We need to get away from those things. Yeah, I wanted to, before we get into uh, your books and the international aspect of your books, which I really want to to look at, um, I wanted to say that when I look at this table, I don't see any electronic toy such as, you know, some kind of screen or a baby computer. Um, What do you think of those things? And what do you think Mm. of the toys for adults, the devices that we're also um, enamored or obsessed with? Well, I feel it's very important to begin with the simplicity. To mm-hmm. crayons, uh, rather than going to an iPad right away. Um, iPads and electronics have value, and they certainly have value in classrooms and at home for kids. Mm-hmm. But you don't want to jump to those and bypass clay and right. bypass Play Doh or crayons or construction toys or games because then you are bypassing development in the brain that the child needs Mm -hmm. to begin. You need to crawl before you walk. Mm -hmm. And playing with basic toys helps children and are actually developing their Mm -hmm. minds and their vocabulary Mm -hmm. around problem solving, figuring things out. Something like this stimulating to the baby is much more important for them to discover on their own than mm-hmm. having an electronic And product. I point out that this is for the seller, that you would take this off, the, yes. the end user, because it's a little right. dangerous for well, a because young it's baby. All, these are all new products yeah, that come into to me for evaluation. And I grabbed a, a variety of them to show. And actually, this lupus, it was, and Mrs. Pinkelmeyer, which I forgot to grab, is a toy that was developed for patients with Alzheimer's um, to have uh, their own Mrs. Pinkelmeyer is an older uh, doll, mm-hmm. doll, a senior. Oh, a senior doll. And there hasn't yeah. been a doll like that. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. It has little soft wrinkles. Yeah, little, I meant to little, bring her. 
I wanted to bring a baby <laughs> doll, and Mrs. Finkelmeyer, and I just didn't have a chance to do that. Mrs. Finkelmeyer has a service dog? Yes. Or just a That's exactly. Friend. It's a service dog. Uh-huh. Uh, I wanted to also say that uh, the, the colors here I like, and uh, I don't uh, I don't care for the fact that there are so many primary colors of toys are made uh, with red, yellow, blue. I know those are good for babies to stimulate because they're so strong, but I think that the children you need like to these do colors. Those. Yeah, I, they need to recognize secondary colors: I'm green, glad you do. purple, orange. Yeah, exactly, and these are made soft by, colors, tones. These you know. are made by the Marin Company Green Toys, mm -hmm. and I have been talking about local toy companies because mm -hmm. we have a very rich area of toy invention and promotion of toys in this Bay Area. And there are a lot of toy companies of all kinds. Well, I'm sure they'll be happy Leapfrog, to hear. LeapFrog, which is an electronic uh, toys yeah, as well right, as that's true. That basics. Is electronic. And, um, yeah. uh, fa and Blue Orange Games is in San Francisco, and they make Fast Track and other games that like this one. Mm -hmm. uh, Blue Orange Games is here. Uh, I mentioned Tangle Toys. And you have uh, Ant Farm, which... This is, this is also a very important uh, company that? called Pe Peaceable Kingdom, uh -huh. and they're in Berkeley, and they make a variety of games and products for children. But what I like about this new series okay. is they're doing cooperative games mm -hmm. where you don't compete, you play, and mm -hmm. you play and having fun together, yeah, playing a game. the concept of new with, games where you don't have to win winning or lose. lose. Exactly. Yeah, that's great. I wanted to mention that you, Uncle Milton's, there's an ant farm here, which, you know, is fascinating, but if, if PETA or PETA uh, had a, an insect branch, which I think they should and they don't, um, there might be some objection to capturing they live actually, animals. They actually did contact me if that on the moment. Really? Interesting. So they, they, they have gone uh, into insects. Interesting. Well, I'm happy about that, actually. There are some insects that I mm -hmm. love, including butterflies, which know, brought us I together. Um, Uncle Milton's did another toy that we just gave to our... Um, a grandnephew, and uh, it's a, a moon light, mm -hmm. a light for the room that actually has a remote, and you can set it up to to echo the uh, the moon its phases. And he just sent us this gorgeous thank you note with his huh. own signature and what he said. He just adores it and loves it. So that's really good. Okay, um, now I would love to focus on your books okay. a little bit, and and. I see that they're in many languages, and I'm well, very curious, how did you go from being an American author to an international author? Okay, well, let's start with the fact that my first edition of this book, which is Dr. Toys, Smart Play, Smart Toys, as to how to raise a child with a high PQ play quotient. And I created the concept of play quotient because we have EQ, emotional quotient, mm -hmm. and IQ, mm -hmm. intelligence. And I felt that what had been missing is play quotient. And the idea of the more you play, the more playful you are. So that book then morphed into my next edition, mm -hmm. which is different Smart Play, Smart Toys. Right. And it takes you from baby to age 12. Both books did that. And then, because this came out and it became something other people wanted to bring to their audience, I was contacted by a German publisher who made the book in German. And they did yeah. it almost like a textbook mm -hmm. with um, uh, illustrations, mm. which the Americans did not, with photographs. Yeah, it's like a it was really wonderful. And uh, I was thrilled that I went to Germany and I talked about toys and they did a press conference and I had interviews with um, people who were the there's Beagle, just Beagle, and uh, a mom who was uh, expecting a new child, and she was thrilled with the book. So that was my first one. And then uh, I was contacted by a Chinese publisher, and they published it in China. So how do they know to contact you? Well, I have an agent who mm -hmm. works on international contacts, mm -hmm. and uh, or somebody contacts me through an email, because our website was the first on toys. Mm -hmm. When we started, no one else had a website on toys. And, uh, somebody, and sometimes they write to me and they say, oh, I would like your book in our language. So that happened in India, which is this book. It came out in um, 
in Indian. Uh, let's see. Hindi? Hindi? In, well, no, no. Actually, Sanskrit? what's interesting, it came out in English, in English, but in India, not in Hindi. And uh, it's published um, what? Uh, in in New Delhi. So, what would be the difference between that book and uh, and, and well, the book, American? Oh, when we go, when the publisher gets it, if there's anything in there that they feel might not relate to their, for mm -hmm. example, I had a lot of American organizations, mm -hmm. and I might take those out because they wouldn't apply to India. Mm -hmm. uh, but if the organization has a website, which many of them do now, mm -hmm. then they can find out about, uh, like for example, I did a lot of special needs children in this book. Mm -hmm. So they could go to any organization and get information now. So this one is languages? being, this is this came out in Spain, mm -hmm. and it's now being translated for an international <laughs> Spanish edition because Spain, uh, Sp uh, Spanish in Spain is quite different than it is in Mexico yeah, and I South see. America, so it has to be modified. This looks like some Southeast Asian language? Exactly, what that's Thailand and... Oh, it looks um, like a prayer book. Yeah. <laughs> And this is from Russia, and that was very exciting. And I have always wanted to go to Russia you. and to Thailand. Did you we go there? We haven't been there. Yeah. We have been to China. Mm -hmm. We have been to Spain, and we have been to Germany. And um, the other countries was all through emails and contacts. Um, well, and you know, I want to thank you for uh, for showing us this. It's very inspiring that you can be. Um, in Berkeley and touch the world as you do. That's from Greece. Uh -huh. Thank you so much for uh, talking with me, um, Dr. Toy, and this is in Hebrew, Israel, right? Yeah. Uh, let's see, it starts, it, it opens <laughs> the other side. <laughs> the countries, and from Turkey. Uh -huh. Anyway, it's been wonderful because toys are not only in Marin, but international. Yeah, it's a language that we all speak, and then as, as, as and young as human world. beings, we all know. Thank you so much for being on Marinations with me, Sharon Sloan, and thank you, Steve Ann Arbab, Dr. Troy.